guys. So you guys just watched the video of our model using the flower and the spray bottle to kind of mimic what would happen with water and landforms. Um, so we're going to be thinking about how our model was similar to the real world and how it was different. So similarities we have is that we have two objects. Um, one's a solid and one's a liquid. So our flower was supposed to mimic our landform, which is a solid. And then our liquid was the water in our spray bottle, which is supposed to mimic the water that would be affecting a landform. Um, another similarity would, similarity would be that with our flower and our water, when we sprayed water onto the flower, it did change, um, which is the same as a landform. When we have water going through a landform or affecting a landform, it is going to cause a change to it. Some differences, and there were a lot of differences with this model, just based off of the materials we could use. So typically landforms are made out of rock and a rock is normally a really hard solid object, whereas our flower was definitely softer and easier to move around. It was more powdery and fluffy. So that's kind of a difference right there. Another difference that we noticed in our model is typically when water is affecting a landform, it's actually normally breaking that landform down or causing erosion, which we'll talk a little bit about later on. Um, but with our model with the flower, instead of breaking the flower down into even smaller pieces, it actually ended up kind of binding it together or making it a little bit more solid. Um, so that's another difference that we don't normally see. Okay, so we used the model to investigate whether water can change a landform. And what we saw was that it did. So let's discuss whether our observations can be used as evidence to support the idea that water can change landforms. So remember that the model we used is a model of water hitting a real landform. So that's what we're trying to show with the flower and the spray bottle. So what evidence did you observe that shows that water can cause a landform to change? And what ideas from the model help to explain what happens when water hits a landform? So you guys can go ahead and pause this video and then in your packets, the very last question will address this right here. So you can take a minute to write down your observations on the packet. You can stop and talk to somebody at home about it or you can just think about it in your head. So when I'm thinking about evidence that I saw um, is that we use the flower to show our landform, we use the spray bottle and the water inside to show water, you know, affecting a landform. And just based off of that model, I did see that water can change a landform because when I sprayed water onto the flower, the flower actually changed. So instead of being light and fluffy like it was before, the flower actually ended up being turning into like more of a paste. Um, it was goopier. It made the flower stick together a little bit better. So just from that, I can see that the flower changed from the beginning to the end. Um, and so when I'm thinking about ideas from the model to help explain what happens when water hits a landform, um, I think it would be something similar, kind of like what we talked about before. I think the one difference is that our flower was a, a solid, but it's still not, it wasn't super hard, whereas a rock is harder. Um, but I do think that over time when water's hitting rock, maybe it is breaking down the rock like bit by bit is something that I would maybe guess at this point. So your observations of how our landform changed when we added water can be used as evidence to support the idea that water can change a landform. So we'll investigate more about how water can change a landform by reading about real examples of landform changes. Okay, so that's the end of lesson two. Um, so I will see you guys back for lesson three and we'll continue to investigate a little bit more about how water can change a landform.